Hello, guys. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode. Today, we speak about something that I believe it is going to be revolutionary and will change the food industry, which is actually something really, really important for all of us because we all love food, right? We all love to eat. But I found a great person. A couple of days ago, I went to an event and I met a, a guy who was actually a very young guy. He's 22 years of age, but super clever, super smart. And his intelligence made him create a project uh, that he will be talking about, actually. We will dissect that. But before anything, thank you so much, Vasily, for coming to our podcast. How are you? Well, I'm uh, doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, lovely day. Uh, lots of work. Started on a couple of new projects, advice on them as well. So uh, a lot of things in the pipeline. You're super hyperactive, right? Yes, <laughs> I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Um, yeah, um, my mind always goes here and there. And uh, yeah, I always come up with ideas to solve problems. That's the beauty. And that's a magic word to solve problems, a magic word. Uh, before anything, I would like you to introduce yourself. We have a tradition here at the NFT stand. We ask our guests to introduce themselves. So we know exactly who is Vasily, what is he doing, what is his background and how everything started and why. So please. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, oh, so uh, my name is Vasily Spatian. I am 22. Um, I've worked on a ridiculous amount of projects in Web3 and Web2. Um, uh, my whole journey in the blockchain industry started when I was about 11 years old, when I bought free Bitcoin for $16.67, right? Uh, great catch, but uh, the password is long gone. <laughs> So, so that one, as so that one was an experience. But uh, back then, I was fascinated about the capability of being able to move money uh, across the platform, across the world, uh, without any government intervention. Uh, because my whole family's been in government, so I, I was raised in government. So, uh, seeing from that perspective, I also wanted to be a salesperson. So when I became 18 years of age, I decided to move out. Uh, before that, uh, I've lived in six countries before that happened. So uh, I moved out at the age of 18, uh, came to London, started pursuing a career in sales. And uh, I used to work for a very big corporation uh, owned and created by the founder of Uber, a food tech company. And there I met... A lot of lovely people. I helped uh, grow the team of SDRs from 8 to 40. Uh, so I met a lot of lovely, lovely people that I was able to teach and help uh, advance their sales careers. And one of them uh, had a genius idea because he knew I was uh, loving blockchain. I got back into it in 2020 with wanting to understand more about the concept behind it and how everything works because I thought there was a lot of unsustainability inside all these projects. Yeah. And from that point onwards, uh, he knew I was a lover of the industry, so he had a play to run project. Um, and there, my whole story of uh, getting really into blockchain kind of began, and my progression just <laughs> went on. Went yeah, right? Which is great. Congratulations. I mean, for, for it is really impressive. And we, even though when I met you, we have also to we have to mention also that you are speaking six languages, right? Yeah. I, I've heard you doing so in Italian, in a, in, a, in a couple of languages, also in German as well, and that's really impressive. Um, more impressive is that at your age, you have done a lot and you have gathered some, some, some experience and some knowledge. And congratulations for that. I have a great respect. Thank for you so that. much. Um, now we will we will directly dissect a project that you're working on. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that it's the Meta Feast. Yes, MetaFeast. Okay, okay. Let, let's dive in and, and tell us a bit. Um, how, tell us a bit actually about the concept. What is that the MetaFeast is doing? Okay, simplest terms possible. MetaFeast is an on-demand food delivery platform, right? So food at any point in the day and night, that yeah. you can tap from your phone, pay in any cryptocurrency or... Uh, Visa, American Express, any fiat way Amazing. to be able to get your food to you from the nearest driver within 25 minutes. Okay. Let us know a bit more. How is this possible? How this... So this is possible. So this... Okay. 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 
Uh, I'll go a little bit into details. That's, that's where the dissection process starts. Yeah, we want to understand exactly how did you, you, you guys want the, the IP? I got it. I, I got it. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so yeah, we want to provide knowledge for people with the NFTs, and we want to help people understand how easy it is actually to create something beautiful that can provide value for businesses, but also for people, and also in a in an up and coming world like the Web three one. So that's okay. Why I, I believe then the, the first thing to mention is from an educational perspective, I see a lot of projects that go in and try to build a token and release a token. And they believe their project consists of this token and the DAO is this very, very important aspect. Well, it's being pushed forward way too early. Now, with MetaFeast, we don't have a token. Initially, we won't have a token. A token will come within phase three. Uh, but the whole concept is is that there is different layers of chains right so how do you actually facilitate for all these types of transactions to be happening simultaneously right oh in solana and ethereum right you're able to accept everything bridges are hackable right you can have your blockchain you can have the smart contracts you can have the bridges getting there and cosmos does a very good job but that, that's why i call cosmos the grandfather of omnichain Right, because it was the first layer zero to be able to facilitate for all the bridges. Yeah. Now, in a modern world, hackers are getting advanced, right? Because uh, that's that's how the world works, right? If we try to oh, fix something, will. they always find a way to break, right? So, Omnichain actually gives the operability of having the highest level of security at the lowest fees, right? So. As an EVM contract, smart contract starts, it merges into a heterogeneous chain like Solana to be able to take its verification, uh, to, sorry, to be able to take its commission process of centralization, so it's semi-centralized, and the security of Ethereum. So then it merges back into EVM to finalize the contract. So like this, it still looks like it's on a one verification scale, but the verification is at Ethereum level, which is beyond 3,000 verifications yeah. at the cost of the Solana transaction and at the speed of that transaction. Which makes the process um, work actually very fast, right? Almost immediate, yeah, almost instantly, like you say. Okay, what is, how does the concept, how will the concept support uh, businesses, fast foods. Now, now from a commercial perspective, right now, how how would we be able to package this into a beautiful concept to be able to give to clients, uh, which are businesses, enterprises, of course, users. Now, this is the, the, there's a lot of thought that has been given into this. There's been months of work. Uh, uh, the white paper is beyond fifty pages, right? <laughs> it's still being finalized uh, for Monday. Monday is the release, uh, so I'll be able to. Um, let you know on that one um but uh the whole aspect is that there's a lot of problems that people don't understand in the industry that are currently going on because there is a certain monopole already created in the web 2 industry by uh, deliveroo uber eats just eats these yeah. are the main competitors in the in the uk at least in london yeah the power is being constantly shifted between them because someone goes and offers a little bit of a different offer yeah. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is they take a ridiculous amount of money for a low level execution of work. And the drivers are also being hurt in the process, right? So every single party there is being hurt and the average order volume, price volume per order is above 25 pounds. And it depends per area, but like on average, it's above 25 pounds, which shouldn't be normal. Right, because at the end of the day, there is a cost of living crisis, and they're just jacking up your order. If you don't do uh, fifteen pounds, there's a three pound supercharge and all these kind of things, right? Because they don't want to lose money. Now the thing is, these companies haven't been profitable since day one. These companies have been bleeding out because their whole business model is unsustainable. When you take the perspective of having these companies charge thirty five percent to a restaurant, right? And I come from an experience of uh, on-demand delivery restaurants, so dark kitchens. Yeah. 
when you have a concept like that and these delivery partners take 35 percent then there is the rent then there is gas and electric then there is uh, the food itself then there is um the staff right even though the staff is like two people compared to like eight people right you're not first of all you cannot scale because you're not getting paid fast enough second thing you're getting robbed outright kind of make it yeah it's a fact also and <clears throat> third thing there is no validation there's no verification nor validation of the jobs yeah true oh i think we're lagging you. yeah 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 we're lagging Sorry, I, I I thought we're lagging. it's good uh, so you said okay, okay. no validation and verification of the drivers also of course okay if you, if you've seen the onboarding process of a driver it's uh, extremely simple you can you can become a driver tomorrow because of blockchain right and and, and it makes sense yeah no, yeah but the thing is the thing is no like like at the end of the day like if you put on the blockchain there needs to be a way to record the information you know because these this data that you're getting from the drivers you need to be able to validate and also the reviews on how they perform you know so if they there's any pattern you're able to use machine learning to verify it but it's always on the blockchain this data cannot be altered yeah, modified edited right uh, exactly uh, again i would like to to simplify it a bit and um okay I'll, i'll give you the, the pointers the five points you want no, five points no i want to ask you one thing uh, um okay. i have a fast food shop yeah mm -hmm. why would i come to use your um platform app why would i come to meet a feast absolutely well first of all uh if uh we if you want to come to us first of all um we need to launch in your area right uh but the second we launch in your area the the key benefits are the 5% commission instead of 35% commission we take 5% commission okay. uh instead of uh, you needing to rely on to harassive unsustainable drivers all of our drivers are vetted right so there's a there's a whole qualification process to become a driver and we have uh third party providers uh which have specialized in this field for years um second thing you can scale you can actually scale because you get same day payments right there is no more uh two weeks waiting refunds and all that kind of stuff everything is same day payment if an order doesn't go through because it was someone uh, someone's fault the person at fault will be taken into consideration like for example if you didn't put an extra box but there is a verification process throughout every step of the way so you take a picture when you put everything when you close the bag for the closed bag as well you take a picture there's always a point of verification so then we can come back and track who made the mistake because if it was the driver the driver will be charged if it was the customer the customer will, will get a negative uh, point on his uh uh yeah, in the blockchain the rift, his data. Yeah. exactly but um you know the crypto market is not regulated yet right so i'm a, i'm a classic business i'm a fast food you would be able you would be able to also get same day uh, fiat that was the question but how do you solve this issue through an exchange Uh, we have off ramping uh, providers we're currently speaking with uh, about four different off ramping providers uh and uh currently it's just a selection process but all of the four that we've selected currently have the capability of solving that issue now this is one of the things i've seen a lot of founders actually make a great mistake in web3 is all about community it's all about collaboration and community yeah. right why is everyone trying to fix every every problem in a company when i know that i can go out and find someone who's fixed that problem already and you're putting together, you know what i mean you're putting together the pieces right exactly exactly why would i why would i go now and spend a ridiculous amount of funding you know to go and fix you an off ramping solution yeah, yeah. Then, then it might not work you know and it's exactly and, and it's not proven as being something that 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 really works and you would waste also time a lot of time not only uh, funding very interesting here uh when do you start the project when do you plan to start the project 
Uh, so Murphy is currently uh, is being uh, well worked on uh, from every possible side. So uh, currently we have uh, recruited a couple of people towards development. Uh, they're we're currently going over like how it should look and all those kind of first initial basic stuff. Uh, in regards to uh, the Omnichain provider, we're already in discussion with a provider. I cannot mention them as of yet publicly. Um, we are also in negotiations, uh, final stages of negotiation with our um, third party delivery provider, which uh, does all the verification and onboarding. Uh, so uh, those are in final stages. They have a huge, huge driver base. That's all I can say. And in regards to the core team, um, I can, it's currently myself, uh, my COO, uh, I have a CPO, and uh, potentially I'll get the CTO from the blockchain because I want the blockchain back CTO. And I have a CSO. Okay, but you, one thing you, you, you did not mention, how did the idea came? The idea came, so basically the... the the, the primal idea came right before I got into blockchain because uh, I, I will never forget this. We were working uh, with uh, one of my very close colleagues, uh, uh, my CSO, Jermaine, um, yeah, and uh, basically we were in the office and he was the top performer for the SaaS solution and I was the top performer for the um, kitchen solution. And we were sitting there, it was, a, it was an evening, we were sitting there and, and I told him, right, we, we, we can actually change people's lives. You know, because because we wanted to start a marketing company uh, in regards to giving um, food brands, right? So virtual brands. So to be able to increase your order capacity, you want to have more spots on the algorithm, right? So if you have a burger and hot dog brand, you can do a burger, hot dog, burger brand, hot dog brand. Now you have free spots. Does that make sense? So, so... And everybody was charging like 15% minimum for just the usage, plus then deliver was charging their 35. So yeah. I was like, why, why would anyone do that when we can charge 1%, 2%, you know? We can just undercut the whole market. And that company was supposed to be called Food Bus, Food Business Expansion Solutions. And from there, uh, we started thinking about it, but then uh, we kind of drifted because uh, I decided I wanted to go pursue and uh, understand a little bit more about real estate. So I, I went to work into an asset management company. But then when I came back into food tech, I was, uh, I was thinking about it. And that's when I was like, you know what, we'll do this and web free. And we'll do and we can actually do this on a bigger scale, we can actually change everything. Because the whole point of MetaFeast isn't to just be a on-demand food delivery platform, right? That's the stage one. But it's being able to incorporate into everything. And what everything from real estate, from being able to provide you with the daily amount uh, of spend for real estate to uh, being able to provide you with the suppliers, everything to be paid out seamlessly, same day, so you get profit. So at the end of the day, when you finish the day, if you have a pop-up, if you want, if you're an influencer and you want to do a pop up like pancakes, you can go do pancakes for a day. You know, like of course you need to do paperwork first, but you can hire it for a day. That's the whole concept of it. It's a very very interesting one. That's why I said <clears throat> that's why I said at the beginning that I believe it's going to be revolutionary and explosive in the same time. It's it, it's something that will it is what we call as buzzword. Obviously, it, it's disrupt. I'm also looking into robotics as well. Because uh, I believe that if potentially uh, this is looked at a big, from a, I don't know, even bigger overview, I believe that anyone can own a, a restaurant to create passive income. Everyone can own a restaurant. Anyone can own a restaurant to create passive income. Imagine a warehouse that's created into a dark kitchen facility that is operated by just ro robots, right? So, so there's already in California a company that creates okay, robots basically. for like like an automated one right that that, that okay that it's fully um automated. exactly just and like, imagine everything is working on the blockchain yeah just, Seamless. just like driverless cars right basically the same principle exactly the same principle almost. it's like like youtube automation actually if you if you put it from from the digital perspective to the real world would be actually something similar right pretty much pretty much but uh, with a lot less uh machine should... learning involved but the, the main question here is how doable is this in terms of resources 
if if we look at if we look at collaboration because uh well as i said never reinvent the wheel there's already multiple amounts of companies in dubai and america that have already created similar types of robots yeah. for being able to produce from pizzas to italian cuisine to uh saudi cuisine so and so on and so forth okay so it's so, a matter of putting the things together right finding what pretty much i would say i would say this concept of being able to invest into passive income uh, machine well yeah. delivery delivery providers is two years away at maximum it is a, it is a whole system indeed let's speak about one thing that yeah uh, we we didn't touch yet and that's uh, obviously nfts what about nfts what is your view on nfts are you going to use nfts in any form Absolutely. Uh so uh how uh, so in matter of fact how are you able to raise uh investment right for a restaurant? Uh because restaurants have it hard. At the end of the day like a restaurant's lifespan is about four months. Uh, they they're the people that have it the hardest, right? They're they're spotty salesmen that come in they sell them bad ideas and it's less even than four months. Yeah. Now if when we look at NFTs, NFTs need to have utility, right? And I believe community and utility, they can go hand in hand. As imagine if you're a restaurant and you want to raise capital because you're expanding, right? And you're able to reap and you're able to have money every day coming in, right? But you need to build a community and you know your brand is good enough, right? Because you need to pass a certain set of qualifications. Yeah. You need to know your brand is good enough to release an NFT collection onto the MetaFees platform. Where people, when they buy and stake your NFT, they get a percentage of your daily earnings. There is a cap out percent from your daily earnings of up to 20%. That's like passive income for them. Exactly. When it's staked, it can earn passive income. Because you're a brand supporter, so you should receive something for it. Yes, the NFT might cost two thousand pounds or five thousand, depending on, of course, the restaurant's price and their uh, cute fundraising goal. But at the end of the day, they're able to generate a new source of uh, immediate funding. That's a brilliant concept. Um, the question, the uh, technical question here is about securities because sh sharing finance in, in, in every form using the method of NFTs, at least now at this stage, it's quite difficult, if you know what I mean. Of course, of course, uh, but uh, this is why uh, if we look at uh, one of the new proposed smart contracts. Uh, 651, I think. No, not 65. Uh, yes, I think it might be uh, of the royalty, the new royalty distribution contract. I think that's, uh, that's across. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So with that, with that one, it, it's absolutely seamless and uh there's no problem because it's being facilitated as well by the Omni chain. So it's it's all in that smart contract. So it's it's absolutely fine. Okay. That's, that's already been thought of. <laughs> that's why I'm asking because most of the people would love to do this. And it's actually something really great. I believe it is really great because, you know, once you are supported by a community of great people, you obviously want to give back and add more value to, to, to their service. Because they're helping you. So you have to help back. Uh, Absolutely. With, with a plus, right? This is the normal way. Um, okay. We got it. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the value that you And I just have to mention one thing. June 8th, we're launching Marine Guard, right? The, when? The charity. June 8th, we're launching Marine Guard. Okay. On, the, on the World Ocean Day, we're launching 100% uh, fundraised uh, NFT charity. So 100% of all proceeds of all um, profits, sorry, are going to charity. And uh, it's going to be the most explosive project of the UK NFT scene. So why uh, stay tuned. Why is that? Why? Because we're the first ones to go into corporate offices uh, with reporters. So any media outlet is invited into it uh, to come in with us and uh, just um, tell them how great they are. And of course, uh, Tell them uh, why they should support cleaning the ocean. So finally, they can be forced to give back. That's really great. Congratulations. It, it's a good cause. And I believe that this is very good to, to, to give back to this world, right? To, to make everything. Exactly. 
way more beautiful and great. And congratulations. We will be supporting that also. 100% you have our support as well. And guys, don't forget, if you want to support, this is the right moment. This is Web3 about, right? We have to support uh, each other. So this, in the same time, you see, I would say that uh, even though we buy things from one another, I don't see it this way. We don't buy things from one another. We support one another, right? Because when you buy something from me, you support me to build something so I can give back also. But when I buy something from you, I also support that as well. So I believe this concept of buying and selling, if we see it from the perspective of helping each other, giving ourselves a hand, would be even more better and would, would really change the world in a better way. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vasily. Yeah, thank you for uh, being part of the podcast today. Always a pleasure. And we will definitely keep an eye on everything that uh, you do. Because again, I believe in you. I believe in your project. And I'm 100% sure that you will succeed. Because I know you have the drive. You have the discipline to do so. And obviously the knowledge. Especially at this age when you still have so much time to to, to work on, on every single step. And, and all, all the, the, the bricks that you're putting together there. So stay tuned, Thank guys. You uh make sure that you uh check his links i will leave the links below so you can have a look on everything that he's developing and also his linkedin as well and in the next time stay united that's important this is web3 about community thank you <laughs>